If you've ever been in a relationship, you know relationships are hard. That's true for everyone. It's not so much committing to another person, but staying true to someone else. That seems to be a challenge for all of us. Social monogamy, the roommate part of your relationship, what my husband calls the hangout ability, the companionship, that's hard. Divorce rates are really high. But it's the sexual monogamy that is really tough. 25 to 60% of everyone will cheat at some point in their marriage. I know. That, <laughs> that's a really wide range, first of all, 25 to 60%. And it's really hard to get uh, infidelity statistics because affairs are based on dishonesty. So people lie to the researchers. Men <laughs> brag about their affairs and women minimize their in infidelity. So we don't even know if we can trust the, st the statistics. So what do we trust? I can tell you what we do know. It used to be a lot easier to be married like 200 years ago. We were only living to be about 38 years old, and so you were married for an average of 15 years. You can live with anyone for 15 years. <laughs> By the time you got bored, you were dead. <laughs> and so now we're expected to live with someone for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 years. Back then, it was a business transaction. You got married to have children, to help on the farm, to pass down your sheep. Today, we don't even need to get married. You don't need to get married to have sex. You don't need to get married to have children. You don't need to get married to get a mortgage or even to get health or life insurance. Marriage and monogamy are optional. And they're not an easy choice. Less people than ever before are married and we get married later than ever before, and 98% of everyone has fantasies of someone other than their partner. That means pretty much everyone, except for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so I did some research of my own to try to figure out this whole relationship thing and why it's so hard. I went on a website called Ashley Madison. <laughs> Some of you seem to know that. Ashley Madison is a dating site for married people to meet other married people in order to have an affair. <laughs> I, it, there's 54 million members worldwide. It's quite popular. So I didn't want to meet someone and go out with anyone. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I wanted to observe, sort of like looking into the fish bowl, but not swimming with the fish. So I set up two profiles. One is a man looking for a woman, and one is a woman looking for a man. All I did was say that my name was Tom, and I was tall. And as a woman, I said my name was Terry, and I was blonde. I didn't put up any pictures or any identifying information. And within 24 hours, as Terry, the woman, I got all these responses from men. They sent me photographs of holding fishing poles or climbing mountains or walking their dog. But what was interesting was that they all wanted a long-term affair partner. They weren't going to leave their wife, but they didn't want casual sex. They actually wanted an emotional relationship. They wanted someone to talk to. They wanted to get to know me. And they didn't want something short-term, which I thought was interesting. Now, when I was um, Tom, I got all these pictures from women, and they were all cleavage shots. <laughs> pictures of the women in lingerie and bikinis. And they said something really interesting, too. They said they just wanted sex. They wanted to meet me after they put the kids on the school bus. They didn't want to know about my problems at work or my problems with my marriage. They said, you have a wife for that. And so they just wanted a casual relationship, and they didn't want a long-term connection. I, I thought this was really interesting, considering that I am a sex and couples therapist and a researcher. This goes against the things that we assume about men and women. 
Yes, men want sex, but they also want emotional relationships. And women want partners, but they also want non-committed, hot sex. So is this why monogamy is so hard? Because we all want both. Or is monogamy so hard? Because this is the first time in history that you can cheat on your partner lying in bed next to them on your handheld device. You know, maybe we don't even know how to define monogamy anymore. What is cheating? Is it uh, texting your ex on social media? Is it masturbating to pornography? Is it talking to your work spouse who you spend more time with than you do your spouse at home? You know, how do we even know what cheating means anymore? What about the future? What about when you have that robot at home? When you come home and they have Alexa and Siri in their brain and they know exactly how your meeting was at work today and they say, how was your day, dear? And they know what you like for dinner and they say, can I order you some food? And by the way, what kind of sex would you like tonight? So is it going to be cheating if you have sex with a robot? How are we going to define monogamy then? You know, today, the way that we agree on our monogamy is by this explicit monogamy agreement, this vow that we say out loud, this one-time promise that we make to our partner that's supposed to last the lifetime of our marriage or of our relationship. That's like saying, I told you I loved you when I married you, and I'll let you know if I change my mind. So <laughs> maybe those private, implicit assumptions that you have about your monogamy, not the explicit promise, but the implicit assumption you have about your, about your monogamy, they might be different than what your partner thinks. They might be micro-cheating behaviors that could lead to something bigger. So when you talk to that person on Facebook or when you have an email that you send to someone that you don't tell your partner, is that considered cheating? Is that friendship you have at work really an emotional affair? And how do you decide? What are the implicit assumptions that you have about your relationship? Well, I can tell you that one thing that you, you probably all assume is that you're going to stay sexual well into your 80s and 90s. You know, with Viagra and Levitra and Cialis, and now with really good hip replacements, we all assume that we're going to stay sexy and healthy well into our old age. And why shouldn't we, if we have the capacity to do that? But that implicit assumption means that we're going to stay sexy forever. And how do you stay sexy? A lot of people cheat in order to stay sexual, in order to stay in their marriage. And therefore, affairs aren't really a dilemma of sex, they're a dilemma of integrity. Because how do you keep your promise to yourself and to that other person that you care about? You know, I really believe that we are in a crisis of integrity right now. How do we honor ourselves and honor that other person. I don't think we wake up in the morning and go, how are we going to hurt our partner today? But we are always going to be loyal to ourselves more than we're going to be faithful to another person, particularly for over half a century. Monogamy somehow has become synonymous with this idea of integrity. If that's true, then we're going to fail over half the time. So I would like to suggest that perhaps integrity means being honest about what you really want and who you really are and what your values are. And if that's the case, you could have a relationship that means something to you and is a commitment to the partner that you're with. So I'm going to tell you three ways to do that to create a relationship that works for you and a relationship where you can stay true to yourself. Number one, you create a new monogamy agreement. Why are we going on this traditional monogamy agreement that was based on marriage 200 years ago? And why aren't we renewing it every couple of years? I mean, you renew your driver's license every couple of years. Why aren't you renewing your monogamy? Have a conversation. I don't care what it's about. I'm not the judge of your relationship or your monogamy. You should be the judge of that. You should have that conversation and talk about what it means to the two of you. 
Does it mean having relationships with other people, whether it's at work or sexual relationships? You determine that. If you're honest, is it a commitment that works for the two of you? It's only up to the two of you to decide what truth and integrity and commitment means. This is not your grandparents' monogamy. This is your monogamy. And if that can be aligned between the two of you, then you are living within integrity. The second way to have a relationship that works? Create new rules, but new rules around your technology. What are your cyber boundaries? Are you gonna share your passwords? Are you gonna create emails where the two of you can read them together? Are you going to be transparent? Because today, commitment means transparency. So you decide how transpa transparent you want to be. You know, intimacy means into me see. So do you want your partner to look at all of your social media? How much do you want to compartmentalize and how much do you want to be open? Because today, cyber integrity will determine your level of connection. And the third way to have a relationship that works, create a sex date once a week. Let's just say it's Thursday nights. You meet every Thursday night with your partner. You don't go out, you don't eat rich food and drink wine. No one has sex on those nights. You meet, <laughs> you meet at home, you light the candles, you turn on the music, and that becomes the time that you commit to your erotic life, to the part of your relationship where you're not just companions, you're more than that, and that becomes sacred. It's like yoga or meditation. You're connected to each other in a way that's just about you. And no, it's not spontaneous. <laughs> Everyone says, it's not spontaneous. I think you mean it's not impulsive. But even when you were dating, you knew when you were gonna see each other. It wasn't spontaneous, you shaved. You took a shower, you wore nice clothes. It's sort of like if you have an affair, you anticipate those stolen moments when you're gonna see each other. If you're married or you're in a committed partnership, this is important. Anticipatory time makes your relationship special. Yes, you can have sex on the, on the other nights of the week, but there's something sacred about this time together. You know, we work hard, we have busy lives. The likelihood of you coming home from a hard day at work and sweeping the dishes off the kitchen table and say, oh my God, take me now, is probably <laughs> unlikely. But if you're gonna do it, that's great. Just don't do it on Thursday nights. Thursday nights are the time that you commit to one another. It's a way of saying, I am there for you. Whether I have a headache or there's something better on TV, I'm gonna show up. Now, if you can do these things, if you can commit to creating your own monogamy, defining values that work for the two of you, if you can create a technology agreement that works for you where you have cyber integrity, you know, I think your technology can work for you to bring you closer together and not divide you. Sometimes when my husband is upstairs in the house and I'm downstairs, I'll text him and say, hey, what are you wearing? You know, it can work to make your relationship sexier. And if you can create a sex date, it is like giving your partner that message. Our relationship is the most important thing above everything else. It's not just something to squeeze in when we have time and energy. You know, if you do those things, you are giving each other the gift of the sacredness of a relationship. Tennessee Williams said the opposite of death is desire. It's reminding each other that your relationship is not anything that anyone else is telling you it should be. It's what you decide it should be. And in that way, you're giving each other this gift. You're giving it not only to yourself, you can choose something higher. You know, evolutionary scientists sometimes say that maybe we're not born as humans to be monogamous. I would argue that theory. We're not born knowing how to eat with a fork either, <laughs> but we can learn. You can choose. We have a prefrontal cortex. We're humans with like a higher function to make decisions. So you can decide whatever kind of relationship you want. You can be socially monogamous, 
You can be sexually monogamous, or I even think there's a third choice where you can be in a sacred spiritual relationship that works for the two of you. And I hope it's a sexy relationship, um, especially on Thursday nights. Thank you.